Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another propaganda cast with me, Imperial Dane. And today, this is for the 600 subscriber. Hooray, huzzah! And that, of course, means a double episode for this day. So, congratulations for whoever is the 600, and a big thanks to all of you, the rest who have also subscribed over these many months. And of course, I hope to see many more subscribers arrive. Now then, let's of course get down to the actual game itself. It is a one versus one on Samoy. Yes, indeed, it shall be another nighttime fight with some nice reflections over this m lake, perhaps. I really like how the water reflections work in this game. Plus, of course, the rest of the game itself, the visuals, of course, are something as well. But so is the gameplay. Oh, you can even see the clouds. Clouds. But that's not what we're here to do. We're here to see the fighting. We, of course, have the map sort of divided into three compartments. The sort of home compartment with this spot sort of being the main point of contention. And yes, indeed, it is, in fact, another Samoa match. I know we recently had a few, but again, sort of felt, why not? It was a good game, and it is one featuring, well, me, Imperial Dane, the glorious protector of the fatherland and all that. So I figured, why not for the 600th episode, and I was sort of, well, what game to do, and then I figured, well, I have this one, so I can pretty much put that one together as well, since it was interesting. So I hope you won't f find me too self-indulgent. Of course, I have more games, and of course, I'm planning sort of a new Novice Monday thing, so of course, be bringing in some lower-level games there. So of course, this might also make up for that, for those that don't like it, and of course, for th those that want it, tune in Monday, for those that don't... Well, no need to tune in Monday then. But of course, we are seeing me, Imperial Dane, in the southern corner. 300. No, not that. 91st Luftlander Division. Let's be a bit bold, a bit daring. Let's not stick with that. And opposing that shall be. Yorus. Yorus. Sounds sort of funny. But here he is, 4th Infantry Division, re making ready to hold the line as the 91st Luftlander Division makes ready for a counter-attack through the serene streets of Samoa. So, of course, this shall be a rather interesting match. I hope at least it'll be showing some of some interesting bits and some interesting maneuvers, and it should also prove some a good opponent. So, here we go. There are my quarters up. Again, nothing unusual there. I'm rather straightforward when it comes to that. There are my quarters down. One pioneer team. Nothing more, nothing less. I can't speak for my opponents, of course, but we are seeing a barracks going up right there. Engineers working hard. While some others are coming out of this headquarters. Goodness gracious, always exciting. Well, not really right at the beginning, of course, then it's pretty dull. The 91st Luftlander Division, of course, as the name sort of Hence, for those that actually understand it, was basically an air glider division. Or at least it initially was. Then it was caused after the whole debacle of Crete, where things went rather pear shaped. It was turned into a regular infantry division and found itself posted in Normandy, where it did its best. It took a rather serious flashing during the Allied invasion and was holding the port city of Cherbourg, where it was, well, blown to bits with the rest of the division and of course other divisions which were holed up in the port town which had been designated a festung, a fortress which was basically Hitler's attempt at sort of creating an invincible stronghold giving an order for no retreat hold out to the last man, last bullet, last drop of blood. Sometimes it worked, most times it actually didn't. So we are seeing Volkskarnes marching towards the center here Laying down some barbed wire here. Sort of a V-shaped pattern, so I won't have to put down so much effort, so my pioneers can much more swiftly get to work seizing other points. We are seeing riflemen going through here, apparently with something sneaky in mind, perhaps. Perhaps they want to move through here, which of course is a rather sensible maneuver. In fact, looks like they are. False grenades in the north. Oh dear, oh dear. No, and then they swerve off going their own ways. Well, that could easily have ended up in a nasty engagement. Volkskorn is beginning to lay down some barbed wire here to sort of cut off this main route for infantry. Not a bad idea. Rifleman securing this fuel point and engineer securing this strategic point, ensuring immediately some extra fuel for the American 4th Infantry Division. Second Volkskorn team hitting the field. Good show there. Pioneer securing the point right there. You can actually see them reflected, which I'm pretty sure it's not you're supposed to do, but 
What the devil? Have the and we are seeing the engineers going for the other fuel points. So rather fuel heavy strategy oh, right away from the Americans. Could mean BARs, could mean an M8 armored car. That's certainly also a possibility. So a rather interesting move. Second rifleman team hitting the field, going straight towards this munition point, only to find it being seized by the false gunners. False gunners pulling back towards this heavy cover, covered by barbed wire, thus denying it to the Americans. Good show there, false gunners. Even new Kleiner. In the south, we are seeing pioneers marching. So this could in fact be working out. We are seeing the Americans going for this strategic cutoff point. Forcing me to rather pull out my forces, leaving the MD-42 to hold the line. More mines being laid down by the engineers. Pioneers securing this fuel point. Riflemen securing this northern point. Rather lagging on full pioneers and firepower a bit. I'm rather underwhelmed at the moment, or well, undermanned. Full pioneers doing their best, but they are wounded and low on men compared to this full health rifleman team. One full pioneers goes down. Some pulling back towards the house, but the riflemen are really doing quite a bit of damage. Full is trying to get some heavy cover, but the well does not do much. Again, directional cover, and this well is not awfully large. Firing away at these riflemen. Full is continuing to take losses. Pack 38 on the way. And further losses to the Full is forced to retreat, leaving behind only one team of very few men in the house. Engineers probably going to get a flamethrower soon. Might see a charge right here against this MG42. Pioneers moving in with a flamethrower, going to scorch those Yankees, turn them into toast. At the same time, we are seeing a Pioneer team going here, doing a bit of harassment themselves. Figure why not, might put some pressure on those Americans to cut them off from their fuel, since I'm rather suspecting, yes, lots of riflemen, no BARs, that's probably going to be an M8 or some snipers, but clearly not seeing any snipers there. MG42 forced out some bad prioritizing there in targets, that's my fault entirely. Clicked on the rifleman instead of the flamethrower engineers. So currently I'm a bit on the back foot, not holding too much. Americans holding the flanks, rifleman on all sides. The enemy advances. And of course engineers who are busy laying down mines as well. Great. Not looking good. Pack is ready. Grenadiers on the way to provide some extra infantry. Backbone pioneers moving in with the flamethrower. Rifleman laying down mines. This can of course only mean infantry. Doctrine is up for the Americans. Rather swift choice, but then again, not a bad idea. Can of course mean they can quickly get down some defenses, prepare themselves for a counter-attack. So good show there. Pioneers attacking from all sides. Also the heavily wounded ones. One down, oh dear. Riflemen not taking a lot of damage again. Riflemen in open cover, and generally any infantry are harder to hit for a flamethrower, and they don't take much damage. In fact, negative cover is the best cure. And looks like, no, they did not make it out of their riflemen, then retreating on their own. MG42 advancing very slowly, wanting to cover the north. Full grenade team and pioneers are ready. Pack also as well. Looks like some grenadiers have also hit the field by now. And looks like these riflemen have not pulled back for reinforcement. In fact, there's an awful lot of highly wounded riflemen. Could be to my advantage. We are seeing a machine gun emplacement being put down. Troops advancing through here. Grenadiers and full grenades doing their best to rush in. M8 has hit the field. Pioneers trying to secure this munitions point while the Americans are retaining their fuel point. Pioneers moving in, forcing the engineers to stop building the machine gun emplacement, giving me more time to get my infantry in place to open up. This could be just what I need. And riflemen out in the open, forcing away all the riflemen, leaving those engineers and their machine gun emplacement awfully exposed. Grenades flung at the engineers, killing one, only down to one man. Will he be able to make it and put up that machine gun emplacement? Clearly not. At the same time, Pack is moving in, and the M8, what is it doing? It's moving in between the wall and the house, oh dear, right into the line of fire of the Pack. And of course, due to the close quarters, it is having a much harder time moving, and this could be the end for it. And apparently, no, it's not the Pack doing the damage, what is it? It's, my goodness, the Grenadier Sergeant just blasted a hole in the fuel tank, causing it to crash. That's one die-hard Grenadier there. Half track getting ready, more grenadiers on the way. And of course I might as well get that M8 scavenged for munitions as soon as possible. Now the time is for me to get out on the field and retake as much territory for the fatherland as I can. The 91st Luftlinie Division cannot wait. Riflemen getting ready for another counterattack. Regrouping in larger numbers. And it looks like they are in fact putting down an observation post on this fuel point. Again, a rather fuel-heavy strategy. 
This is rather interesting. Half track ready to reinforce at the front. Grenadiers with their one M8 kill also ready. Further Grenadiers arriving. And Pioneers marching out towards here to put on some pressure there as well. Riflemen sneaking about. Lots of Riflemen awfully clumped up though. Nothing else though from the Americans. Grenadiers staying together. Half track ready to move into support wherever needed. Folks going there slightly pulling back after engaging all of these Riflemen. We are seeing Riflemen also moving through in the north. Some engineers with flamethrowers as well. Grenadiers advancing towards the fuel point. But they will be engaged. Flamethrowers moving in. One engineer is immediately put down. Grenades flinging one of their stick grenades at the engineers. Doing a bit of damage but no kills. Riflemen moving in. Right into the anchor fire of the MG42. But they do manage to avoid the burst of it. But there's still Grenadiers and those submachine gunners nearby. And they will have to retreat right past those other Grenadiers. Will the Riflemen make it out of there? No indeed. A shot to the head. Those sneaky devious Grenadiers. In the meanwhile we are seeing Americans securing this area. No further mines though. And let's go shift over to Joros. Who has access to a hard strike. He might in fact be counting on that. To sort of help him up by now. And looks like we are seeing an anti-tank gun and some BARs now on the way. Fox Grenadiers moving in. Half track also supporting them, ready for a counterattack. And looks like the Americans are once more moving in to try and cut off this strategic point. Fox Grenadiers getting him a closer, spotting this. The half track moves away to deal with this. Seeing as it's the fastest unit and looks, oh dear, both Fox Grenadier teams hit both mines right there. That was quite unfortunate. Right from counterattack immediately as the Fox Grenadiers are suppressed. That's a good move there. Although the riflemen still do take a bit of damage, but Fox Grenadiers are taking even worse. Oh dear, looks like the other ones are able to get up again out of the dirt. Riflemen taking losses, but the Fox Grenadiers are heavily wounded. The riflemen could still turn this around. Will they? Apparently not. Yes, in fact they do. And the half track keeping these riflemen occupied. Sticky bombs are also on the way, but the BARs first need to get ready. And the half track could certainly turn the tide around in this instance. At the same time, we are seeing Grenadiers marching towards the north. north. Riflemen still hanging about. And now the Virgin one could have been their mines going off, of course, since, of course, this is something you perhaps does not know. And let's, in fact, just pause a bit. BARs equipped, but. Units gain kills for their mines, so of course if you have some riflemen laying down mines and set mines get a kill, they get veterans. It also applies to engineers, so that's of course also a reason for example why Americans also should be fond of using mines. Veterancy, you gain veterancy that way as well. Rather sneaky in fact. Anyways, back to the game. Anti-tank gun on the move. Riflemen getting gunned down by the vicious machine guns of the Mittler Schützen Panzerwagen. Doing its best. Gunning in fact down all of these riflemen. Has to be careful and get out of there very soon. Down to one man. My goodness. He needs to really get out of there. But no. Apparently he must have forgotten it. And right. This is one thing I certainly wanted to show. You and at the same time the half track is coming under fire from the anti-tank. And having marched it all the way down there. Half track out of control. Crashes into a small wall. There you go. But one thing to keep in note. Barbed wire actually needs to be at a distance, otherwise they can actually capture right through it. Silly me. But you might as well learn from my mistakes. There we go, for the fatherland. I'm in fact gone defensive, very rarely I do that, but in this case I figure I have a lot of to hold. He's being rather aggressive and I figure why not try defensive, why not try something that can allow me to hold greater amounts of territory with smaller forces. Riflemen pulling back, of course this territory is now neutral, so the For the Fireland bonus does not apply. And now Riflemen counter-attacking, Spearyars blazing, nothing else to support those Volksgrenadiers, although something might be coming out from the Sturm Armory now having gone for that. Volksgrenadiers taking quite a bit of fire, retreating, Veterans you won for these Riflemen. We are not seeing a Veterans you won, upgrade number one for the Supply Yard. Another M8 is on the way, Riflemen counter-attacking once more. Lots of heavy losses, no. Medic stations for the Americans either. That's a bit unfortunate. We are losing a fuel point. We'll of course have to see what the Sturm Armory holds very, very soon. Second M8 also soon ready. Question is, will it live as long as its predecessor? And apparently, I haven't gotten around to actually scavenge this M8 wreck, which is beautifully mirroring itself in the lake. Wondering how it got into that shape. There we go, it is a Sunderkraftfahrzeug 234, the Puma, or at least not the Puma without the upgrade, but there you go. 
charging ahead, opening up on the right and forcing them to a full retreat. Full screen is also moving in, crashing through some of the barbed wire. And of course, hanging about that observation post, giving them a bit of extra fuel. Otherwise, all other fuel the points, well, besides this, which in fact will also give them a fuel bonus, although they do hold these. But again, this one is not connected. It needs to be through here or through here. Puma moving in, Rifleman trying to lay down mines, but it's too late, and they get out of there because if you're caught laying down mines, you will in fact be easier to hit and damage. And they quickly moving in, trying to deal with this. It will have the advantage of the heavy armored cars, and of course that has a larger gun than Puma, or the heavy armored car only has an auto cannon, which doesn't do too great against other armored cars. Mines being laid down by the Pioneers, Grenadiers hanging about, being all dashing and grenadiery. And now the false guy is caught out in the open by the M8, forcing them into a retreat. MG holding out still here, engineers moving through the north. Apparently unaware that they are being watched from the house, and there we go. MG42 blazing away, and the heavy armored car moving in. Grenadiers as well, awful lot of firepower down on the engineers, forcing them away. And in the south, the M8 is once more pulling back, having the anti-tank gun in support, but there's no vehicles right there. And what is this? We are seeing the Nebelwerfer. One of numerous that the Germans made, it basically means fog thrower or smoke thrower. And it was basically a sort of designation for their chemical weapons branch, basically meaning, well, smoke. It was basically a cover-up name. The Americans also had, in fact, had a chemical thrower division, which also had some very large mortars, but that didn't really come to the same stage as the German naval warfare, which basically ended up as their Front rocket ship. artillery Front branch, pretty too much. But Neverworth will certainly provide some extra firepower against those sneaky Yankees. We are seeing a triage center going up now. Still nothing to really help with the infantry attrition situation. No supply yard upgrades. M8 though moving in, opening up on the Grandiers. The Puma trying to support, but of course, not really being the fully upgraded Puma, it can't do an awful lot at this stage. And of course it pulls away alongside those Grenadiers. Fultz Grenadiers reinforcing, and something else is on the way from the Sturm Armory. What could it be? Grenadiers hiding up in this house, popping down one Grenadier at Rifleman, I mean, once he advances. And a grenade flies through the windows, of course, meaning grenades. Two Grenadiers are lost. This is bad, usually. Grenadiers, though, still holding out against this Rifleman threat. Fultz Grenadiers arrive from the south. Oh dear, heading a mine. That's a rather botched rescue attempt. If I might say so. Grenadiers really need to get out, but then again, if they get out, they'll probably gun down. But no, apparently they managed to retreat. The false Grenadiers covering them most heroically. But now the false Grenadiers themselves have to beat a very hasty retreat. At the same time, Stug 4, Sturm Geschütz. Elite of the German artillery branch, and yes, indeed, it was in fact belonging to the German artillery, yes. With the except of a few compromises, in particular where the German armored divisions due to reorganization during 1943 to make up for the lack of armor for all of them, they were in fact giving each one a battalion of Sturmgeschütz. M8 moving in, opening up on this MG42. Stug 4 moving in to deal with this M8. Opening up. This could end up very badly for this M8 armored car. Since it can't really deal with this Duke, at least able to keep up the pressure, able to harass numerous points and just keep on attacking. Plus I have the Duke now to sort of provide a sort of measure to keep that M8 at bay, at least until it gets some friends. So let us return to the match. Grenades flung at the Grandiers. Oh dear, heavy losses. Three down and another false grenade goes down on the retreat. Or was that a rifle on engineer? Apparently so. That was an engineer. Grenadiers wounded, screaming for help, but there is no medic since I forgot that. My mistake. And looks like the Americans are moving in to deal with this mortar, but there's a mine here which they could hit, but no, they're laying down mines of their own. Good job, but they are coming under counter mortar fire. And the heavy armored car moves in, opening up on the riflemen. Doing a bit of damage there. Mortar fire continuing to fire. And hitting three of the riflemen, killing them. Although it looks like one is bravely wounded. BAR also left behind for any German troops to seize. Engineers also standing behind with only one man and very little health. Have to be careful right there. Rifling getting ready still. No supply at upgrades. I can't help but fuel. That's a bad mistake. M8 sneaking, hanging up still there. 
full screen is and granny is getting reinforced and just a note this chap is rank 11 i mean level 11 so not exactly like those other two games but i still thought it interesting it had some good points <laughs> and now he's doing something odd <laughs> very odd indeed in fact what he is doing at least i'm suspecting is he's actually preparing himself for an arm and assault he's expecting me to rush his base and thing is that's not my Enemy style. Not at all. I don't risk that. I'd rather just hold the entirety of the rest of the map rather than try and assault the frontal base. Plus, there's another flaw in his plan. Some might call it small. Some might call it huge. I still call it a flaw. There's this bit here. Right through here, which, of course, I can then attack the rear of his base. Keep that in mind. Grandier securing this victory point, giving me all three. In fact, hooray for the fatherland. Looks like these might hit a mine. Oh dear, be wary, be wary. And they just miss it. Bit fortunate there. Looks like the anti tank gun moving in after having been repaired and healed. Good show there. And mate also getting repaired. Not much support though, since of course all the other survivormen are tied up making tank traps rather than actually leading assault, which is rather unfortunate. Munitions point here secured. Nebelwerfer once more firing away just for the fun of it. Supply lines are broken. And riflemen are instantly suppressed. And a bit of fire right there, leaving it all an inferno. Nice there, and the M8 moves through the inferno, the dashing away. Like a good greyhound. Where we headed? Looks like these grenades might be caught out in the open. False grenades are nearby with MP40s, but MP40s won't do much. Then again, no, these are not the Grandiers that killed uh, M mate with their gun. No, these are these chaps, and now they have a patch trick that's only going to be only more lethal. And the Puma hits the mine. The engine is a blazing inferno. That's unfortunate. Yeah, False gun is moving in here. Grandiers holding out in this small building. They do not budge. They act as a target as Grandiers with patch tricks moving in. And the False gun is flying away. Their Panzer fast. Riflemen attacking in the north, but getting stopped by an awful lot of firepower. And the M8 gets hit in the rear. Oh dear. And looks like we are seeing an howitzer gun coming up. And firing away with its first blast. Where shall it go? Apparently right into the center of the church. Right into the cemetery. Churning it up. Desecrating it. And rather going to compel me to move my mortar team. If it actually hit. Which is just firing into the center of everything, hoping to hit something, and there we go. In fact, I have a medic bunker up now, in the marketplace, or what well, what used to be it, and one shot actually hits. My goodness. That's about it. Puma having been repaired, and in fact turned into a fully equal Puma. The turret being from the Leopard Reconnaissance Tank, which was itself cancelled as a project, and then the gun was basically just used to upgrade the... Heavy armored car, it did alright, not a lot of divisions in fact had it, the Panzerlehr and some SS divisions had it during Normandy. Volksgrenier is opening up, so that's of course Panzerlehr support. The Stuga, I have no idea where it comes from. Could be the 17th SS or something else. And Riflemen standing out in the open. Grandiers and Volksgrenier on the one side and more Grandiers on the other. They are into Hornets and there's grenades being flung right at their feet. Killing two grenade flung at the grenadiers, but they are retreating, and the riflemen will have to retreat as well in the face of all that firepower. M8 number two ready, it seems. Need to be upgraded, and riflemen are still laying down tank traps. Again, I can't help but feel this is a bit of a misappropriation of resources. Again, he's sort of expecting me to attack his base. Nice idea, but again, not going to happen because that's not my style, and I'd rather not waste resources like that. Pioneer sneaking about. Puma moving out. It looks like we are seeing a small assault moving in towards the center. Grenier's coming under fire. One goes down to the M8 fire. Riotman moving in. BAR's blazing. Wooden cart getting blown to bits. And the Puma moves into the rescue from the Bokash. Right. And oh dear, it misses. That's a bit shoddy. But now comes under fire. And a sticky bomb gets flung at the Puma. Gunner gets killed on the M8 though. Veterans you one which go makes it faster. Damage on the Puma, but it actually does not get a damage engine this time around. Falcon is getting closer, opening up. Pioneer is also moving in, and the riflemen are getting absolutely torn to bits. Oh dear! More riflemen moving in, but this team is not looking good. 
The Puma still managing a few good kills. And artillery fire flying in at the position. Blowing up bits, some hedges and some stone. That's about it. Flying over the small river or the creek. Pioneers getting gunned down as they're trying to repair the Puma. Anti-tank gun setting up. Never for firing in response. Damaging the engine of the M8. Or was that perhaps a mortar round? Another M8 moves in. Nebelwerfer misses the most, although it, this house catches on fire. Volksgrenier's force to retreat. Small reconnaissance force, I suppose, or at least force and reconnaissance. Stu could move in. Mortar rounds continue to fly. Firing ever ceaselessly. And looks like the Stu is moving out to deal with this. Nasty bit of business. Mortar rounds continue to land long after anything has been there. Armor Veteran C2 is of course up, giving the Stug the machine gunner upgrade and for assault guns like the Stug, Stug 42 and Geschützwagen, it's great. For the tanks though, it's pretty much rubbish. So I wouldn't get it for that, but of course Veteran C3 though does a nice job for your other tanks. Plus the Stug actually with the armored skirts. M8 moving through here. What does it have in mind? Some nasty raid? Oh wait, it's actually spotting for the artillery. So of course, and let's just briefly pause for this. In fact, let's shift over to me, just for the fun of it. But, 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 there's, in fact, let's shift back to him just to explain things. There's something with the on-map artillery in terms of how it works. How does it work? Oh, great, Dan, you ask. Well, its accuracy depends on two factors. One is length from target, that is, for example, from here to here. It's only going to be less accurate than, for example, from here to here. And it's only going to be more, more accurate than if it were trying to hit here. That's one thing. Another thing that depends on it is line of sight. If a unit has line of sight, i.e. can act as an observer, it's going to do be a lot more accurate. There's going to be a lot less scatter. So, for example, moving the M8 in here, behind the cars where it's safe, getting line of sight on this mortar team means that Howard side is going to be a lot more accurate instead of just firing into the blindness, darkness, fog of war, sauerkraut, whatever. That's the key. Line of sight range are two factors and it's always better to have line of sight if you want actually to hit something. So keep that in mind. I hope you found that educational. And of course I rather figure that's probably going to be some artillery flying in right here very soon. Upgrade complete. So pulling out everything and shifting back to me. Mortar team getting the devil out of there. Rathman hanging about here, not taking this BR. In fact, I haven't taken this BR. That's a bit dumb. Nothing on the way from either of my structures. And the Rathman scavenged the BAR. Out of fires. M8 getting repaired once more or not. Anti tank on moving out once more. Constantly putting it back to his triage center for healing. Good move there. Fultgren is hanging out by this MG42, sharing jokes, stories. And more grenadiers, in fact, hitting the field, perhaps from this medic station this time around. Could be from the barracks. And a panzer command is on the way. Not dawdling about anymore. And looks like the Americans might be marshalling for an attack on the north. Although not before the naval weapons pins down some of the riflemen. M8 moving in. Riflemen hanging about ready. Stuke 4 ready here to deter any assault from the front. But of course now the attack is shifting which is good. Very good in fact. And at the same time though counter attack moving in for the fatherland. Extolling the virtues of the Fallen and for the Grenadiers. Some laying up sandbags to soak up fire. And Grenadiers charging in. Using the For the Fallen due to this sort of awkward layer here. Charging in, forcing away the rifle and securing this point. M8's moving in here. False Grenadiers awfully out in the open. Machine gun as well. Veterans you want up for that, which increases accuracy and reload time. Stug 4 will have to move in. Panzerfaust flying at the M8. The M8 though should focus on the MG42 so the rifleman can continue. Second M8 moving in, although I can't help but feel this is a bit too late. Pack moving in, ready to cover the North Stuke 4, also moving in. And the M8 gets hit by Pack Fire Stuke 4, also moving in. Pack misses, oh dear, this, oh dear, Stuke clears a kill. And this second M8 might be lost to Pack Fire. No, the Pack misses. The Stuke though does not, destroying the main gun, damaging heavily. Through the smoke and fire, the Stug moves, artillery fire flying in on the bunker. MG42 Gunners gets away, Sticky Bomb goes off on the Stug. 
Stuke though is not deterred, it fires away with his machine gun, killing one rifleman with its main gun actually, forcing the rest away and this rifleman team the just hang about, sucking its there. thumbs. Grenadiers moving in, this artillery business not scaring them, counter-attacking once more from the front line now that the wave has been beaten back, and Grenadiers hanging out here for a bit of fun as well. And the Nebelwerf once more screams at the Americans, singing its dirges of the fatherland. Or more likely the Americans. And we are getting a sniper now on the field, that's a bit late. A tank depot might actually have done more, personally. Or an upgrade for the supply yard or a medic station in the longer run, but there you go. Rifleman getting torn apart by Grenadiers. Other Grenadiers doing a good job down here in the south. Last assault by the Americans. Victory points are running out. Grenade flung at the Grenadiers doing a bit of damage. Grenades flung by the Grenadiers not doing much though. Mortar round continuing to do their worst. Doing a bit of damage to the rifle and apparently the sniper actually got killed rather swiftly. So, there you go, a victory for the Fatherland once more. The American forces were defeated in this glorious counter-attack by the 91st Luftland and they've shown to hold out some of the area near Sherburg. So, of course, this is the double episode for the 600 subscriber. Hooray, huzzah, and a big thank you. But what can we learn from this, actually? What can we learn from this sort of nasty game. We saw some good aggression from the American in the beginning, really caught me off guard. Although at the same time it was rather fortunate that I had forgone the third false grenade team and then gone straight for the pack. Turned out to be my saving, otherwise that M8 might have done a lot more damage right there. Having gone straight for the fuel points, having gone straight for an M8 rush, certainly not a bad way of doing it, but then of course he sort of got it into a tight pinch.